Uh, I'm going to run through a little bit of information on a project that we have just completed in Greenock at uh, Royal Court and John Colt House. Uh, Royal Court consisted of 84 flats in the tower uh, and the John Galt House, which is next to it, is 87 sheltered housing accommodation. Uh, slightly different to a lot of towers within Scotland, this particular tower had uh, had individual gas boilers within each of the properties linked via a sea duct. A sea duct is a communal flue which goes up the centre of the building, there's actually six of them going up the centre of the building. Uh, the communal flue was beyond its, its economical life. Uh, and a new solution had to be found for uh, heating the properties. Uh, likewise, uh, John Galt House, which was uh, across the road, uh, had a community heating system in it. Uh, presently, however, the gas boilers were very old and were in need of replacement. We were asked on a, a design and build contract to remove gas from the tower and replace it with a highly efficient heating system. Uh, one of the key briefs for us was uh, to ensure that the end use of the tenant's costs did not rise, if at all possible. Uh, obviously that in itself brought about a challenge because having individual gas boilers, they're already on quite a, 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 a cost-effective uh, rate. We were also to try and uh, source as much funding as possible for the delivery of the, pr the project. Uh, so as you can see, the, the two buildings are relatively close to each other. One's in a kind of U-shape uh, and then across a, a small side road, uh, you've got the, uh, the, the tower block. So the first step in the process for us was to do a high-level dynamic simulation model to reflect uh, both what the existing installations had for heat demand and running costs uh, and domestic hot water, uh, and then also model that against all the different technology types which could be put into each of the individual properties. And that ranged from individual quantum heaters being put in to each of the properties we uh, discarded replacing the gas boilers themselves with, with efficient gas boilers because they wanted to, to degas the building. And then we looked at several different solutions for, uh, for, the, for a district heating uh, system. Uh, it included air source, combined heat and power, biomass, and a, a mixture of those technologies as well. Uh, in the end, looking at the dynamic models, uh, a mix of uh, biomass, gas-fired combined heat and power, and gas-fired backup boilers were chosen as being the most cost-effective, both from a capital uh, expenditure perspective, but also it was the lowest running cost for the end users and the greatest carbon reduction. Uh, the CHP had the added benefit and kind of swung the figures slightly to operate the base load for uh, the properties. And the flip side is that that also provided electricity for all the communal elements of the tower and also for the sheltered uh, housing complex, uh, which equated to a £35,000 per annum reduction in their electricity bills. So what we, we ended, up, uh, ended up doing is a new plant room was uh, located in the gardens at the rear of the building to house the biomass boiler and the uh, integral fuel store. Uh, the existing plant room within John Galt House was utilised for the combined heat and power plant and the gas backup and that was linked uh, via 150 metres of underground pipework to connect the two buildings together. One of the things that we had to go through was uh, speaking to planning and there was two issues that, that we came across when speaking to planning. Uh, one was through Safer Communities consultation. Uh, now it was Hertz biomass boilers that we put in for the, the, the installation, which are already very clean boilers. In fact, they are certified to be used in smoke controlled areas. Uh, however, uh, unfortunately that particular area at the local uh, air sensor 
uh, has them uh, reaching their limits for uh, for uh, air emissions. Um, so one of the things we, we did was installed an electrostatic filter. Uh, the electrostatic filter, uh, while the, the CO and NOx were already very low, uh, it drops a particulate matter down by uh, kind of 70 to 90 percent. Uh, so it's just about as, as clean an output as you can you can actually get. <coughs> there was also concerns over visual impact. So uh, our architects division looked at uh, some innovative solutions for the flu, uh, and we actually spec'd up for uh, the flu to be disguised as a, a tree, very similar to if it was Connor sitting in the back there that, that dealt with that. Um, very similar to what you see with the mobile phone mass. Uh, in the end up, due to the, the installation of the electrostatic filter, and we could do a slight reduction in the, the height of the flue, that ended up not being a requirement of planning. However, it was it was something that we, we had looked at. So again, you can look at lots of different kind of innovative solutions for these things. Uh, all the risers distribution plant uh, were all prefabricated at our engineering facility. What that meant is that we could bring the, the individual sections onto site after the coding etc was done and install the entire uh, lateral and uh, vertical uh, systems throughout the tower block within 10 working days. So what that done is that really reduced the, the upheaval to the tenants within, within the building. Likewise, the Biomass cabin itself was also manufactured off-site at our, our facility uh, and was craned in with one of the largest cranes I've ever seen over the top of the buildings and into the, the back garden. So the, the connection up of the, the biomass cabin to the, uh, the pipework uh, and getting an up and running uh, system is less than uh, 20 working days. Within each of the properties, they were fitted with a heat interface unit pre-payment meter, uh, new radiators and radiator circuits put uh, within the building. Uh, there was also an element of asbestos removal included within the contract as well. I'm going to do a little bit of, kind of blowing our own trumpet in a, in a moment, which I, I try not to do too often, but uh, <coughs> this is a, a slide that we actually have internally within our organisation uh, and it seems pretty pretty standard stuff, but we, we genuinely have this in every presentation. Our commitment to each and every tenant is to communicate with them as effectively uh, and be professional and considerate at all times, be understanding to their needs, support them wherever possible, and treat their homes with the utmost respect, ensure that all works are completed in a safe manner and to the highest possible standards. The reason that I've put that slide in is because yesterday we actually got sent this press cutting uh, Monday 26th of February uh, in relation to another tower block project that we, we actually completed uh, and it was a letter that was sent in from one of the tenants within the, the tower block and I've picked out a couple of wee statements that we're very proud of one of being who needs Nick Knowles and the DIY SOS crew when you have this dream team and this project was a great example of teamwork between RCH and the Dermot Group I have yet to meet such a mannerly, pleasant and professional bunch. In fact, they injected a bit of life into the building. Uh, and there was actually a special praise for Bobby as well, who uh, led the, the TLOs on behalf of the Dermot Group within that, that project. So can I, uh, a brief overview, we were engaged in uh, May 2017. Uh, we completed the project plan, system designs, tenant consultation, Riser installation, temporary plant, delivered and installed at the first property was completed by the 1st of November 2017. The last property was completed and risk eliminated at Royal Court by the 15th of January this year. Uh, we brought in £474,000 of renewables funding through pension schemes and another £458,000 of eco funding and subsidies. Uh, the contract was awarded to us through a framework. So. Not the usual presentation, just a, more of a kind of case study on, on what we've done uh, on that particular project. But thank you very much for your time. Does anybody get any questions? Thank you.